And away we go. To Oxford, nine strokes for cover in practice. They look to have got away rather better here. Just slightly up. Cambridge already being warned by the umpire. He's obviously trying to... Cambridge Cox is trying to push um, Oxford over. And they're still level pegging after the first 20 strokes. It's just an initial start by Oxford. Cambridge immediately responding. Seem, seem to have gone off. Oxford seem to have gone off well here. Now. It's not quite clear why they're moving apart. That's warning the umpire. Well, I heard it said this week that when the umpire says both crews move apart, neither Cox moves at all. <laughs> Quite clear, he really wanted to get his uh, his word in early. He wasn't going to allow any nonsense off the start. The, the crews have moved quite a long way apart there. Maybe that one of them has, has moved too far. Is actually out of the stream. James Ball looking very relaxed. So this is where I'd expect to see Oxford move out a bit. This period here, one minute to three minutes, they're very strong. I'd say, having had a, a look at the steering line, that. Cambridge actually did quite well. It looks to me as if they're quite well over towards Middlesex, looking at the line. They're well away from the line of boats. And at the moment, Cambridge has just the nose ahead. And this is where they really know that they've got to get ahead if they can. Coming down, Fulham Reach, just approaching Beverly Brook, coming up to the uh, half-mile point soon afterwards. And the next... Thing to look for is the Fulham football ground, which comes up on the right, which is the uh, traditional point where the Cox on the Middlesex side will try to gain the most advantage of the bend at the end of the stand. But Cambridge looking the better together here. But they have actually made a big effort. They've kept their rate at about 37 strokes a minute. They're actually overrating Oxford, which was perhaps slight of a surprise. In practice, Oxford have looked to be the higher rating of the two. So the question is, how much have they used in those initial two minutes to actually try and hold this bend? This race may not be over until quite a lot further down the course. The both crews seem to have settled at, at pretty much the same speed. Now, if they settle down, they're likely to stay together. Devin Wyman just up alongside the uh, six man of the Oxford boat. C Cambridge pushing again, I think. And they're getting a bit closer. And this is Cambridge trying to take the bend early, Oxford trying to hold them late as long as possible. And the umpire was warning Oxford, and they've had to pull apart. Remember, every time the rudder goes on, you pay a penalty because that slows the boat down. The Cambridge don't quite have as much as they did in the, the Isis Goldie race, and they're not, they're not able to, to lean in the same way they were. You sound hugely relieved about that. Uh, Cambridge yeah. Whiteman has uh, <laughs> got up to the, uh, the five-man now. The Oxford uh, boat. And again, they're getting very close as uh, Kevin Wyman tries to squeeze here. They're overlapping. This is a good contest. Yes, you're right, you know. <laughs> this is very difficult if you're here because you don't want to get carried away with the other person's blade. But you've got to watch what's going on. I think the umpire was getting uh, quite agitated there. He was really forcing Oxford away. He warned both crews, then he warned Oxford. Cambridge desperate to minimise the advantage that Oxford have got coming into this bend. They've almost got round it now. So they've, uh, they've done well. They've, they've got half a length lead, and they've rode about a third of a length further than Oxford to get to this point of the race. That first bend is worth about a third of a length. And this is a very tough time for both crews. It's at this point, three or four minutes into the race. You, you feel like you should be a long way into it, but in fact, it's, it's barely started. More warning. More warnings. And uh, plenty of volume. It passed the uh, Steve Fairburn mile post. This, with, with the speeds like this, and both speeds seem to be matched, this is going to come to a question of guts now at this sort of point. Still an extremely good contest. 3.47 for Cambridge at the mile, 3.47.5 for Oxford. That's how close it is. Both crews have settled down now, and they're about 34.5, 35. Uh, Oxford are really pressing them all the time. Again, the warning from the umpire, and again, it's against Oxford. 
Todd Crystal says you need patience, thick skin, some uh, organizational skills, and he says the word coxing doesn't derive from cocky, but it should. Cambridge has made a move that. here, I think. Cambridge are moving. Oxford are having a big effort now. They're definitely pushing in a good hard ten strokes to try and get back on terms. They know they've got to counter the next bend, which is coming up within the next minute. We'll start, the bend will then start to move into Cambridge's favour. Cambridge have still got about two-thirds of a length, maybe three-quarters. Cambridge have just... I think they may have just moved a little bit there. Now let's thrust and counter thrust. As they come past the Harrods Depository, and now the warning is for Cambridge. And they're so close, there was one clash. What, what happens is Cambridge are trying to push Oxford further out so that they can push them wide at Hammersmith Bridge and then close the door on them. Oxford desperately holding on. But this is where it's really important for Todd to, to hold his line, particularly if Cambridge are being warned. He must keep leaning as much as he can get away with. Huge determination from both crews here. Oxford not letting Cambridge get away. Good battles between the two coxes. And the blades have been, as it were, cheek by jowl. So I think Cambridge put an effort in there. Their, their rate lifted slightly. They've, they've come off that now. and They've, they've taken a, maybe a third of a length for that. Traditional moment for the Cambridge push. They, they waited for the first bit of that sharp bend to, to try to make it count extra. Underneath Hammersmith Bridge with Cambridge in the lead, but only marginally, but now the big Surrey bend is to their advantage. Sharp at the start, then straight, and then the bend again. Now, Cambridge have really got to try and push out here if they can. Their next two minutes is crucial from the point of view of trying to break clear of Oxford. Oxford, of course, have got to do the opposite. They must try and glue onto them here. It means they're going to have to row faster all the time in order to stay in the same relative position. Cambridge will try and push them out, but they seem to have got nearly a length now. Still not safe by any means. This, this point sitting on a length is, a, is a, another crucial time because if you actually get clear, if, if, the, if the, the crew behind don't see you, they lose heart and there could be another half length will come very quickly if, if Cambridge can actually get clear. They'll, I think they'll suddenly move out. Again, Oxford doing their level best to hang on. Times at Hammersmith Bridge were 6.44 for Cambridge and 6.46, so uh, up a second and a half on the mile post time. It's Cambridge just about on a length. Now, both these two crews are incredibly well trained. They'll have both rowed about 3,000 miles in the last six months. There's going to be no quarter given here. And if Cambridge can't break away, then they could be in for a real fight down the second half of the course. Look at that. There's the stroke looking over. James Ball, a really contained man, this. Very, very calm in a crisis. But Cambridge have just pushed there. Saw the rate lift. Well, there were doubts about uh, Cambridge in the engine room whether Ethan Eyre would maintain the Cambridge standard rather than the Harvard one, whether Seb Delson Bowling had uh, lost a bit too much weight and thereby a bit of power. These are, this is the time when the questions are being asked, as they are of Oxford, who have got to hang on now, but Cambridge with a good amount of clear water. Tough times for Adam Frost and company. They see how Cambridge are now able to give them the wake, and that pushes the Oxford boat around. They're, they're trying, this will be their last... They must make an effort now to get back on contact. Difficult for Todd Crystal. Cambridge puddles being met by his men's uh, stroke side oars. Absolutely. And Cambridge are really been uh, pushing out. They're trying to get on because now really they're around that bend and they're going to race down the straight of the island at Chiswick Gate. And that's the view back. That's what the Oxford stroke, James Cambridge stroke, James Balls, looking back, seeing the bow of the Oxford boat, almost in a line behind him. You can see how the puddles of the bow side blades to throwing turbulence down under that Oxford boat, just throwing them off their stroke. Hugely difficult, because what does Todd Crystal do? He's got to maintain his line as tight as he can. Bit of a push, I think, again from Oxford, just trying to hold the gap as it is, at least. It's, it's very difficult at this point because they, they obviously want to make efforts to get back in touch, but in fact they, they have to stay relaxed and, and keep that good rhythm because there's still ten minutes to go. Coming to the end of uh, Chiswick 8, just short of two and a half miles of the four and a quarter. This is 
where, as you can see, it's straight after the first bend, then there's another little kink, and then it slowly opens out to being the bend in the favour of the Middlesex crew. But that will become academic if Cambridge can hold the clear water between the two and can then come across at the crossing. I think there's going to have to be a, a tremendous effort made by Oxford and, to, and indeed by Cambridge to try and keep the gaps apart. Cambridge is going to try and stop Oxford getting an overlap, but Oxford will have to try and get back to they, so they can take their bend. As long as they're this far back, Cambridge can dictate the line as they come round from the end of the Surrey bend and sweep towards Barnes. There's a point here where Todd ought to be trying to follow the Cambridge Cox because if, if there's no danger of a clash, he's safe to be on the Surrey station. And then when he comes into the final bend, which will be in Oxford's favour, that's when they must make their move. There are the watching uh, Cambridge coaches and their president, John Carver, in the foreground with the red beefy hat, cap. Harry Mahon standing up. Robin Williams to the left in the dark grey anorak, just uh, flicked a bit of spray off his uh, eyebrow. Chiswick steps times, that's the next mark, 10.29, 10.33. Cambridge building, Oxford hanging on, but one heck of a lot to do. And, uh, there's about 15 seconds outside the record, which is incidentally almost exactly where Goldie were in the, uh, the race uh, just half an hour earlier. There's that bit of tailwind down the last, the last bit of the course will keep them going. It'll be very hard for Oxford to make this up now. Cambridge have won the bend, they've kept the distance from Oxford, and they've opened up. There were some questions about how the, the middle part of the Cambridge boat, the big men at four and five, would keep the rhythm. There was a chance that the rhythm might break down in the Cambridge boat, and that would allow the, the terrier-like aggressiveness of Oxford to get through. But they have rowed very, very well. James Ball here, probably the star of the show in the Cambridge boat, indeed possibly in both. Very long, easy rhythm. This is the secret to good Cambridge rowing. See, he's talking to the cocks, getting that rhythm right. You can see the pain on the faces, though. That's looking back from Lonsdale Road, from the Surrey side of the course. And it seems to me that Cambridge are going further away. Well, he's going to have his achievement, even if he wasn't in the boat, it would seem. Her Royal Highness looking keenly. Different sport for her, you usually see her so often at Wimbledon. Yes, I think Her Royal Highness had a very happy visit to Cambridge last summer. <laughs> and there we are, looking at the Cambridge crew. Julian Emmett, bow. Miles Bynett, last just stroke, switch side to row. Or stroke side, Nick Burfitt. Seth Dawson Bowling, Ethan Ayer, Henry Clark, Rob Waller, and James Ball. Rob Waller coming up to Emmanuel School Boathouse yet again. It's old school. Yes, and they may need just a little bit of a push, but it's interesting that Kevin Wyman is a very still cox. Very little reaction from him. It's a bit more movement of the shoulders, as you'll see from, from Todd Crystal. He sits very calmly. It's Wyman. And it's all looking very calm for Cambridge. And I think a moment ago I saw it may just have been a bit of a splash in front of him, but I think I saw the tear, a tear in the eye of John Carver. It's going to be uh, a success, as I said. They're now coming up to Barnes Bridge. We haven't got any further away, though. I think Oxford made a big burst down the uh, past the bandstand. They seem to be about a pit and a half higher than Cambridge. Uh, yeah. It often looks like the crew in front is just cruising along, happy with uh, how they're going. But at, at this point in the race, this is this is pain for everyone involved, and uh, it, it won't look like three lengths from from the Cambridge stern. They'll they'll be they'll be still worried about this result. Adam Frost asking for more. Huge determination from Oxford as they go under Barnes Bridge, but Cambridge are up and away, and uh, Rob Clegg must have that sinking feeling of. A third time loser, the president of two in the uh, in the Oxford boat. Okay. Crowds around as they come towards the brewery and the sharpest bend on the course. So the smile on the face of Rob Waller, indication of how relaxed they feel. And there you can see how much the bend goes round to the finishing point. It's only about two and a half lengths. Cambridge have been 
Well, quite settled around 33, 33 and a half for the last few minutes. Oxford at 36, really making a battle for it. They've actually switched stations now. As you can see, that you know, Cambridge have come well inside onto the Middlesex station. I think they must be a, a pretty tired Cambridge crew. They had to fight very, very hard to Hammersmith in order to get the best of Oxford. It was predictable that Cambridge would, uh, would come across. And they can't see the finish. We can. Kevin Wyman perhaps can if he looks round. But the head is still. The instructions continue. It's not over till it's over. Go on, boys, go on. Seven seconds difference for the record under uh, under Barnes Bridge. Well, I think with those two shots there, we can see the, the difference between the crew, the relaxed style of the, the Cambridge and the, the aggressive nature of the, the Oxford row. Uh, on the day, it looks like efficiency is triumph. Well, there was certainly plenty of aggression at the start, but I think that those battles were won by Cambridge. And the push came again around Hammersmith, and it's going to be four on the trot for the Light Blues. There's the new building of the brewery. Well, just away to the right now. As they come up towards the finish, Cambridge. Final spurt from uh, Oxford, but they cannot possibly save the day. Yes, Cambridge has, has really done, I think, everything could possibly be expected of them. There's the finishing post, the clock ticks on. Maybe close 1702 to was uh, by Goldie. Julian Elliott will be the first to pass. The finish line, final spurt from them. It's going to be under 17. Final few strokes, and the flag goes down, and 16.58, maybe 59. Another success for Cambridge. Oxford, again, have to give best to them. It's Kevin Wyman who stands up, the biggest smile there, and the applause came from uh, John Carver. Always the pictures of delighted faces and reaction on the winners. And, oh, Harry Mar, that's a nice touch. All feeling for John Carver, James Behrens knows that what he started is being continued. Three cheers come from the Cambridge crew. <laughs> and Wyman, who may have plenty of opportunities to be in this Cambridge boat, is looking back at the Oxford crew, who look dejected, whither is fled the visionary gleam, where is it now, the glory and the dream, as William Wordsworth said in a different context. Dan Topolsky. And uh, Steve Royal there, looking very disappointed. Nick Howe has been helping, and uh, Roy Jenkins well there right, in uh, the very Oxford well boat. What now, the thoughts of Dan Topolsky? The finishing time, 16.58 for Cambridge, 17.05 for Oxford. So uh, no change after the time at Barnes Bridge in terms of the gap between the two crews. No, and I think uh, it was a very hard-fought contest. Cambridge had, would have given more if they had more to give. I don't think they could have opened that gap more than they did. Time, very, very respectable. Anything under 17 minutes is very fast. Also shows how good the Goldie crew were. 